What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for our team builder for week two in the Alpha Pokemon League. Uh, we are a little bit behind because of the 4th of July weekend. Um, I'm actually not battling him until week three. And so the week three battle will be going up right behind this most likely. But my week two opponent is Master Roshi, who is the coach of the Aston Villamperos. Uh, you can see his team there, Clefable, Mammal Swine, Crocodile, which is also his Z user, Trevenant, Vanillux, Caesar, Star Raptor, Tentacruel, Hitmontop, Luxray, and Rapidash. Uh, actually, I'm really excited to face him because I've lost against Master Roshi in league matchups before, and he has a pretty interesting team. Um, I will make sure the team builder goes up before the video, but if you don't want to watch the whole thing, there will be a link in the description to click straight through to the battle. So what did I bring to this matchup? I brought my Arcanine, which is my Z user. He's going to have Intimidate just because he has so many physical attackers. It's a very easy swap in on things like the Caesar, uh, to a lesser extent Hitmontop and Rapidash, uh, and even Luxray. Uh, it can't really come in on Mammal Swine or Crocodile uh, or Star Raptor, but it can swap in after something goes down. I did bring Steelium Z because it allows me to do a lot of damage to a very defensive Clefable. And if any of his other Pokemon swap in on it, nothing there wants to take that hit after a Flare Blitz or Close Combat either, so that's nice. The only thing that can take like a Flare Blitz into Steelium Z, Iron Tail, is the Tentacruel, and that doesn't like taking Wild Charge, so very comfortable about that. Just enough speed there to outspeed a Max P Crocodile, and yeah. Up next, I have a duo of Kabutops and Illamis. I have a very offensive Kabutops with just enough speed there for the, uh, like a Scar Star Raptor as long as I'm in the range, granted. And I just went Waterfall, Aqua Jet, Stone Edge, and Rapid Spin. Rapid Spin because of the very high probability that he might bring uh, Toxic Spike, which are really annoying for my team. But, really, all I have to do is get Kabutops in under rain and spam Waterfall. Uh, he doesn't really have anything that can take that outside of Trevenant, and then Trevenant gets destroyed by Stone Edge. I was thinking of bringing Knock Off, but that seems like a waste of rain turns, so didn't really want to deal with that. Uh, Aqua Jet is also nice against the Mammal Swine in case he tries to bring a Scarf one. I cannot prioritize his priority in case he's trying to pick me off or something like that. Uh, that speed is very, very nice, and it allows me to pick up just a little bit of bulk by not over-investing in my, my speed. But Illamese goes with Kabutas because Illamese is how I get the rain up. A very bulky Illamese, just the regular max HP, max defense set. That way I can get the rain up against something like Mammal Swine or even Crocodile, barring like a, a Z move from Crocodile. And um, I can also get the rain up against things like the Clefable, or if he brings Defog Caesar, or if uh, Tentacruel is locked in on something, I can Encore it into it. Lock them into their moves, and I can also put up the rain against Hitmontop even, and then I can get a slow U-turn out of there. Thunder Wave is just in case something like Trevenant gets out of hand, um, or if he has uh, a setup Caesar or something like that, then I can at least Thunder Wave them and make them a little bit more manageable for my other Pokemon. Up next is we uh, are is another possible abuser of the rain. Again, he doesn't really have too many water switch ins, and even Tentacruel can possibly be two hit KO'd by a Raquinid. Uh, I didn't go Choice Banded this week just because of I, I wasn't sure if um, that would be wise to do or not. I don't want to lose a lot of momentum and I think it's relatively probable that he will bring Trevenant after seeing my week one battle where Rakunin did so much damage to my opponent. Uh, so if I don't need to be locked in on the liquidation I don't want to be. That being said, Lunge and Leech Life are nice secondary moves in order to get back HP or to lower attack stats and Toxic is just there for the Trevenant as well. If he brings Trevenant and he can switch it in, I will probably Toxic in on the switch in and then switch out to something like Magneton because Trevenant has a lot of really annoying harvest sets and I don't really want to mess around with that thing. Um, the Magneton is there just in case he brings Caesar. He might bring Shed Shell Caesar, uh, but I want to at least force him into that option. Uh, Magneton is also pretty nice against the Trevenant and the Manilux and um, to a lesser extent, the Tentacruel and the Luxray. Now, I have just enough speed on the Araquanid to outspeed uh, zero speed Clefable, 
and Magneton has enough speed to outspeed Caesar. Other than that, I didn't see the point in investing more speed because those two are more bulky anyway, so I wanted to grab a little bit of extra HP for both of them. For Magneton, I did decide to go with Thunderbolt, Hidden Power, Firebolt, Switch, and Flash Cannon because I didn't want to be fodder against his ground types, but at the same token, um, I need to be able to hit everything else too. Otherwise, I would have gone with like a Specs or, or even a Scarf set. But this seems to make sense for this matchup. And then in the last set, we have Dodrio with Brave Bird, Return, Quick Attack, and Jump Kick. Just because Dodrio outspeeds his entire team naturally, his fastest thing is Star Raptor. And if he tries to bring a Scarf Star Raptor, this will help check it. Uh, also, in the early to mid game, I can kind of spam Brave Bird, especially if he doesn't bring his Luxray with Impunity. Uh, jump Kick is just there in case I start taking too much recoil. Then I can use Jump Kick to hit, for example, the Crocodile without taking a bunch of recoil from Brave Bird. Uh, I do have to be careful with that in case he does have Trepanet. So, just a few options there. I am expecting him to bring his Clefable, the Mamoswine, the Crocodile, the Trevenant, and the Caesar. Uh, so that's five Pokemon I feel like are relatively likely for to show up here, for him to bring rather. And um, I could see... I don't see the Luxray coming. I feel like I have too many answers to that. Granted, he might bring it just for Araquanid, but uh, I don't really see it coming. I could also see Rapidash coming just because of my Arcanine. He would have Flash Fire access there, and that would be a little annoying to play around. But uh, that's why I also have coverage moves on things, just in case he, he decides to bring them. So that's the team. I hope you guys enjoyed the team builder. We're going to get right into the battle now. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching the team builder. If you did not, you can see that I am on the other side here. We have our Starf Dodrio, Eviolite Magneton with enough speed for Shizor, uh, Mystic Water, Offensive Araquanid, Defensive Rain Dance Illamese, uh, Max Attack Adamant Kabutops, and our uh, Corkscrew Crash Arcanine with Z Iron Tail. Um, I actually kind of like being on the other side of the battle with me. Look at all my cool Pokemon. Uh, these battles were done on Showdown for a mixture of people having trouble with ginning and there was weird maintenance on the servers so I wasn't able to get everything bred because a lot of my stuff was in Pokemon Bank and I pull it down and I breed it and then I put it back up there. So Showdown is great for these things. Um, you can see that my opponent Master Roshi brought his Hitmontop, a Mamoswine, a Tentacruel, Staraptor, Crocodile and Caesar. Definitely not um, whom I was expecting. I was very happy to not see the Clefable though. Um, but hey, I, I was actually pretty okay with this matchup. I will go ahead and say that everything on his team that can have the ability Intimidate does have the ability Intimidate and that makes things quite annoying when you have several physical attackers. Uh, the game plan for me though was I at some point I need to get in Illumines against something that has a favorable matchup, preferably the Crocodile, and set up the Prankster Rain Dance because uh, Kabutops and Araquanid kind of smash this team on the offensive side. But some of his Pokemon are either bulky enough to to do damage back and hit back, or um, just outspeed me like the Star Raptor and take out uh, my Kabutops or take out my Araquanid. So I need that Rain up to have that opportunity. Um, so yeah, we'll get right into the battle here. He leads off with his Star Raptor and I lead Arcanine. He had so many physical attackers, I figured it'd be worth it. Uh, his Intimidate goes off before mine, so he's of course faster, but that doesn't really tell us that much. We do know he's not banded from the damage from the U-turn at minus one. I just went straight for a Flare Blitz because there was nothing he could do to KO me, and I could do severe damage back to him with my Flare Blitz. Tentacruel takes that and gets burned, but that doesn't really matter because he has the Black Sludge. And not wanting to take a Scald or a Sludge Wave or anything, I go directly out into Magneton. And here I went for Flash Cannon, expecting him to go out into one of his two ground types to be immune to the electric move. And plus he doesn't know if I'm Scarfed or Specs or anything like that. And so to bluff the Scarf for Specs, I swapped out, expecting a ground type to come in. And he does go out into Crocodile, but that has Intimidate too, so that doesn't work out too well. Um, and he gets a double Intimidate on my uh, Araquanid. After minus two, that liquidation does not do very much at all to his hit on top, so that's kind of annoying. Um, I could have stayed in there and gone for liquidation anyway, but I was worried hit on top might have a coverage move like Stone Edge, and I didn't want to get toxic. 
So I just went back out to my Arcanine one more time. We're back at the lead matchup, but this time he has the Intimidate and I do not. Uh, so I just went for Flare Blitz again, knowing that at this range, I have a really good chance of taking out the Tentacruel after another Flare Blitz into a Wild Charge. But I get the lowest roll possible on my Wild Charge and he takes me out with a Scald. And uh, that was just kind of, I was just like, really? I couldn't take out the Tentacruel with a Wild Charge? But that's the, the game you play with not having the, the damage boosting items there. I do go out to Dodrio here because this threatened him the most offensively. And um, if something goes down and he goes out into Mamoswine, then I have switches into that. I can go out to Illamese or my Araquanid and be relatively okay. Uh, but he actually goes out into a Caesar, and I really wanted to call his bluff here. I really should have just clicked Brave Bird. That's actually what I clicked, and then I clicked Cancel. Because if he knocked me out with a bullet punch, then I trapped his Caesar and I could have killed it. Uh, unless he had a Shed Shell. But I did not click the Brave Bird. I just went out into Magneton, and because of that, he gets the U-Turn, which allows him to go out into Crocodile. But that does allow me to get into Illamese, and then I'm a complete derp, and I forget that Encore does not work. Through Prankster, when it's on a Dark-type. Um, he misses the Rock Slide, which doesn't matter too much there. It would have been a roll for him to kill me with that first Rock Slide. A uh, pretty good roll in my favor. Granted, I didn't get the roll in my favor on the uh, earlier move, but that's fine. Um, but with the rain up, go out to Gabutops. I thought for sure he would go out to the Hitmon top, and so I swapped out into my Araquanid to expect that. And he just goes straight for Earthquake because he was sacking his Gabutops and he was just going to bring it in afterwards. Uh, he does miss a pretty important rock slide right there, because um, that would have put my Araquanid at pretty low HP overall. And knowing that he kind of has the Brave Bird to hit my Araquanid, I just go out to Gabutops, and now I can do a pretty good chunk of damage to something. Hit him on top comes in, but even with the Intimidate, with the Rain Up, that does a good amount of damage. I was very pleased with that. Unfortunately, with his leftovers, he's just out of range of Aqua Jet, so I have to take a Mock Punch in order to take him out with another waterfall. But now that the hit on top is out of the way, uh, I might be able to do a little bit more with my uh, Magneton if I need. So once again, I'm just gonna go directly out into my Magneton here. If I attacked, I would have died to my life orb, and there is no point in that. And so he was actually just roosting there, hoping that I would kill myself, which is an excellent play. Uh, but I was, again, surprised. Either he has like a ton of special bulk, or I got another minimum roll on my attack, so his Scizor lives the Hidden Power Fire, and he kills me with the Close Combat from the Star Raptor. Uh, now I know I'm faster than him though, so that's nice. I'm pretty sure he was Adamant Scarf based on his damage rolls that he was getting, um, and plus he's swapping the Star Raptor out a lot, and he played this very smart in the end game, so I'm actually gonna pause it right here. Uh, you see there that I brave, I used my Dodrio's Brave Bird against the Star Raptor. I had to do that. Even at minus one attack, there was no way for me to KO him. I couldn't have KO'd him without minus one attack, basically. But um, m my thinking was, okay, so my Dodrio is going to go down here, unfortunately, and that leaves him with his Star Raptor and Mamoswine, and I'll be left with my Kabutops, which can get off one hit before dying to its life orb, and my Araquanid, which is fairly healthy. So I'm going to do as much damage as I can, maybe hope for a crit or something on the Star Raptor, and do that damage. He finishes my Dodrio off with Return, and then we have a decision. Do we go into the Araquanid, live the Return, and then finish off the uh, Star Raptor, or do we go out into Kabutops um, and try to play around with Aqua Jet or something like that? Now from this range, at neutral attack, my Kabutops, Life Orb, Aqua Jet KOs the Star Raptor. It actually has a chance to KO the Mamoswine too, but I only get one attack. The Mamoswine has never hit the field, so I don't know if it's Scarf, I don't know if it's Sash, or anything like that. Um, I am fairly certain that the Staraptor is locked in on its move, though. So, I do decide to go out to Gabutops, and now, the thing that makes the most sense to do here is to double back out into Araquanid. And that is because if he happens to stay in and click uh, Return again, I lose no matter what. So, that's that doesn't really matter. But if he goes out to Mamoswine trying to get my Kabutops to KO itself with its Life Orb, and I double out to Araquanid at the same time, Araquanid can live any one hit from the Mamoswine and one hit KO it back. Then Staraptor has to come in and lock itself into a move and then my Kabutops can finish off the Staraptor. 
Uh, so that's what my mindset was. The question was, is he going to stay in and attack or is he going to swap back out? Because he knows I can KO him with an Aqua Jet from this range. And he actually ends up swapping out. So this is perfect. I get the situation I want. I go out into my Araquanid and I can live any hit that he goes for. He has Rock Slide and unfortunately he gets the flinch right here. Uh, that's a little bit of payback for earlier. Araquanid dodged the Rock Slide earlier, so now it gets flinched. Um, so... Uh, that right there is definitely um, just desserts, I guess. That's Pokemon. That's the game we play. So I get flinched. He just has to go for another move. But apparently he's actually choiced and he misses his second rock side. And so my Araquanid kills his Mamoswine. Because uh, if he weren't choiced, he would have just gone for Earthquake or something. Uh, Staraptor comes back in and he just goes for a return here to take out my Araquanid. But the situation that I spoke of. Kabutops can definitely KO Staraptor from this range, and I get to finish it off with an Aqua Jet with a delicious double down at the very end, but since my Pokemon was KO'd by its own life orb, that means that it's my victory. Uh, so, that was a weird battle. Um, I definitely got the best in of the hacks there, even, even with the flinch at the end. Because, like, if Araquanid had got a hit by the Rock Slide earlier, I might have played around with it differently. But since it was, if since it were so healthy, I kind of hung on to it. But, yeah. Thank you very much, Roshi, for the battle. We always have really good battles. This is probably the haxiest match we've had, though. Uh, so hopefully we'll get a chance to rematch him in the finals or something. But, that means yet another victory for the Eternity Enders. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching the game. Let me know if you guys thought... Um, that I played that end game correctly there. My big, I think my biggest misplay was wasting a turn with Illamis and um, also going out to Araquanid with, when I had Kabutops in, I could have just KO'd the Crocodile. I think those are two kind of unnecessary risks that I took there, but I'd be interested to get some feedback from you all about those if you have time. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you all in the future. See you later.